Hello and welcome to this edition of Computer Doctor. I'm Michael Freshour, and today I'm going to show you how to install a secondary DVD-ROM into your computer. Okay, now uh, this one can be a little difficult because um, there's a lot more processes that need to be done in order to get this um, DVD-ROM installed into your computer. So what you're going to need, I would recommend, is a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. You're going to need two screws um, and your secondary uh, expansion um, DVD-ROM, which we have here. Now this is um, a uh, DVD-ROM that requires a uh, master slave IDE um, uh, data transfer connection cable. Um, I um, am not too sure if um, uh, computers need uh, or if they make SATA data um, DVD-ROM uh, drives, but uh, this is a uh, instructional video on an IDE DVD-ROM. So uh, let's get started by first laying your computer down uh, sideways, allowing that the slide panel is faced upwards. Disconnect your thumb screws that are on the side of your computer. All right, pop the slide panel off. Set that aside. All right, and now let's uh, spot out where this uh, CD-ROM, DVD-ROM is going to be installed. Uh, here is your slot right here where your DVD, your secondary DVD-ROM will be installed. Here's the uh, first one. Your second one is going to go right next to it, right here. Um, this is very similar to as installing a IDE hard drive or secondary hard drive, but this is for um, a DVD-ROM. Uh, let's first get um, as much cleared away that we can um, by what it looks like. We can get rid of this uh, or move this um, HD or uh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, hard drive um, bay away. So let's disconnect this um, hard drive bay, pop it out, and just set it aside so it's out of the way. Okay, um, and now uh, let's begin by um, popping off the front panel of your computer. Now the only reason why we're going to do that, here's my front panel, is because we're going to actually slide this DVD-ROM in from the front. Um, it'll be a lot easier than trying to wedge it in between um, all of this. So uh, let's that now that we have this um, this uh, hard drive bay disconnected. Let's move that away. And uh, to disconnect the uh, front panel, there are little um, notches that need to be um, popped out, allowing the uh, hard the the front panel to um, pop off. And these notches here, there should be three on the top and on the bottom have to be um, popped up and pushed out. I'm sorry, popped down and pushed out. Okay, I got one, two, and third one. This is why I recommended using a flat head to be able to pop these out. All right. All right, now that we have, um, now that we have the, uh, Panel, front panel disconnected, we can easily now uh, be able to slide in our secondary hard drive. Um, I would now recommend for you to now put your um, hard drive bay back in place. All right, also um, get the thumb screw, screw this back on. Uh, so that it doesn't, you know, fall out again. Okay, once when it's nice and secure, we're actually going to now flip the computer up this way, so that we can take a look at the um, slot that we have open 
for our secondary um, DVD-ROM. Uh, if your uh, panel is actually um, covered with either a piece of metal or plastic, um, if it's plastic, they might have given you an option to actually um, ply it out. If it's metal like mine, I actually had to pop it out. Um, they made it weak, uh, weak enough metal that will actually break. So you can break uh, the metal piece uh, out, allowing you to then um, be able to slide your secondary hard drive right in. So let's grab our secondary hard drive that I have over here. Um, th here's a very important thing. You gotta make sure that you install it, you know, properly and not upside down. Um, by knowing that you're uh, not installing it upside down, you should be able to tell that the, dr the DVD drive is on the top. Um, many people think this is right. Well, actually it's not because it's on the bottom. Um, also, the button has to match up with the, the front um, panel of your uh, computer. My button's on the bottom, which is correct, and the, uh, the, the door, the sliding portion of the DVD-ROM is on the top, which is correct. So now let's uh, just slide it in to our computer. So, it'll be pretty simple to slide in. All right, there you go. Let's lay it back down flat again. So we can now take a look at what we just did. Here's our new secondary hard or uh, uh, DVD ROM that we just slide slid right in um, through its uh, opening in front of the computer. Now we actually got to get the connections connected um, to the back of it. Uh, let me come back around over here. Actually, however, before we do that, uh, let's make sure that it's nice and secure. Um, inside here by screwing it in uh you know what no let's actually get uh let's get this connected first because let's um slide this back out just a little bit um gives us some room to maneuver behind it um just like the uh just like the hd or not the hd uh the uh the hard drive um the id data cable has a master a slave and a connection to the main board. Uh, the connection to the main board gets connected here uh, using the motherboard example to the IDE ports of the motherboard. The part of the master slave that says main board um, gets connected to the uh, computer BIOS motherboard. Just snaps in right here. Okay. Once when that's nicely secure, you want to make sure that the master um, gets connected to your very first previous um, DVD ROM that was already installed in your computer. The slave is going to be your new secondary uh, DVD ROM that you just installed. So uh, let's take a look here. We already have our master slave connected to our um, com computer's uh, BIOS motherboard. We have the master already connected to the um, first uh, DVD-ROM. We're now gonna connect the slave part of this ID cable to th this new um, DVD-ROM. Make sure that uh, you're connecting it properly. You don't want any of the pins to break. Make sure it's nice and firm and tight so that you have a um, sure connection and that the computer will be able to recognize and transfer data from the, the DVD or CD that you uh, put into this DVD-ROM to the computer. All right, now that we have that nice and tight, uh, you're now gonna want to install the, um, the ID power connectors. Um, you will find these from uh, the, the power supply um, that's located here on this computer. Here's an example of one that I pulled. Um, we have many uh, cables coming out of this power supply. You want to look for one that looks like this. 
it should have a master and a slave. They're not labeled because they both um, don't matter if it's for the master or slave, but it's the same power cable. They both do the same thing. They're just connected to each other, allowing for a master and slave uh, hardware. Uh, one has to be plugged in to the uh, master or the very first um, DVD-ROM that we have installed, and then the second one will connect to our new secondary uh, DVD-ROM. This will um, give power to our um, DVD-ROMs, allowing them to run and being able to have them transfer data between its ROM and to the computer's motherboard. Alright, so let's do that now. We already have one connected to the first DVD-ROM. Here's the second one um, that's not connected. This will get connected right here. Make sure it's nice and firm to this secondary DVD-ROM. Um, if it's not firm, then it won't turn on and the computer will not recognize that there is a new uh, DVD-ROM attached to the computer. Okay, now that we have all the connections uh, connected into this DVD-ROM, let's slide it back um, all the way. And you should see holes right here um, ready uh, for, um, a, uh, sc for screws to go in here to secure this inside the computer. That's why I asked for two screws. Get your Phillips screwdriver and the Phillips screw and make sure that there's a nice secure connection to this uh, plate that will of connected onto the computer. Make sure that it doesn't move around inside the computer and that's nice and secure. Let's get the second one here. Okay, now that you have your DVD-ROM secure, and that uh, the power and the IDE data transfer cable is connected to both DVD-ROMs. Master is connected to the first one, the slave is connected to our second one, and the cable is connected to our motherboard on the IDE port of our BIOS motherboard. You are now ready to put your front panel back on. So let me move around over here. Take your front panel of the computer and you're gonna just pop it on back to the way it was. Now don't apply force because you may break the prongs. Take your flat head that you used previously and now push it down on it, allowing it to pop back in place. Okay. Once when you have, um, let me flip this over. Want to make sure that, you know, it's secure inside your computer and that your front panel's not going to pop off. Okay, once when you have made all the um, connections from the front panel, uh, firmly in place inside your computer and it's not going to come off, you're now ready to put your um, your uh, side panel back on. So let's grab that. Back on. You may now put your thumb screws back on to the side panel connected to your computer. Make sure it's nice and tight and it's not going to pop off. Your thumb screws are nice and tight. All right, you can now plug in all your back panel um, wires and connectors, plug in your power cable, turn it on, and give it a second and allow it to recognize and install the driver for the new DVD ROM that we just installed. After it's found it, you have successfully now just installed your DVD ROM. If it did not find it, Go back and make sure that all the connections are secure to the DVD-ROM, that the IDE cable um, is secure to both the BIOS, the master, and the slave. Make sure also that the jumper um, slot on the, um, the uh, DVD-ROM is uh, connected in the right position and uh, that uh, the power cable is connected to the um, 
to this uh, DVD-ROM. If all connections are now secure, plug everything back in, turn it on, and you have now completed uh, installing a DVD-ROM to your computer.